scary looking. Hmm. Hello, happy Wednesday. Let me just hit the microphone. Oh, let me make sure that's turned off. Being noisy again. All right, here we are. Wednesday, Oct no, not October. Good gravy. I am tired. Um, and don't feel the greatest. <laughs> Obviously, it's November fourth, twenty twenty. <clears throat> and as all of twenty twenty, it's insane. So, Deacon Mike is prepping for his homily for tomorrow night at UTSA. That's why he looks like he's in pain next to me. <laughs> he's thinking, reading and thinking, doing multiple things at once. All right. <clears throat> we are on uh, chapter 22 tonight of the Gospel of Matthew. Trucking right along. There's a total of 28 chapters in this gospel. So we're just going to keep plugging along till we get it finished. Mm -hmm. Yep, we are. We are, we are. We're going to get all the way through it eventually. So I hope all of you are doing well. And uh, doing like me and avoiding all the news. Because Jesus is still king. That's all that matters at the moment. <laughs> Just, uh, you know. Everything else will not matter in the end. So, yes, keep praying. But no sense getting yourself upset about any of it because it's done uh, ta -da, ta -da. well let's see we have a couple people on here your mom hasn't said hello yet so I don't think she's on yet And I am at a loss of anything else to say at the moment. Don't forget to uh, order your gordita plates for the gordita plate sale on um, Saturday, November 14th at St. Peter the Apostle Catholic Church. Um, I haven't been on the new website in the last couple of days. I know there was a little bit of an issue. We have a brand new website if you haven't been on. Um, it's still kind of being constructed. So be patient as Christina works on that. Um, but check it out if you haven't checked it out. Um, and if you can't find the um, Gordita plate sales on there, just call the church office and... Um, uh, they can get you set up. Also, I believe they will be selling ticket, selling plates um, after masses this weekend. And don't forget to buy your um, raffle tickets for the truck. Hey, mom's here now! Yay! Uh, let's see. That's all my brain can think of at the moment. Um, yeah, 
So Gordy to plates, raffle tickets, be looking for basket ex extravaganza stuff online. Someone is texting me. Okay. I think that was Mark Cruz texting me, but I'm not sure. Well, your mom is here. It's 8.05. Do you want to go ahead and open us in prayer and we'll get started? Okay. Okay. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Father, bless us this evening as we read the 22nd chapter of Matthew, your son's gospel. Uh, open our hearts. Um, be present um, in the temple with the Lord as he talks to the scribes and the Pharisees and the elders. Um, and when we see ourselves in the parable uh, which he's going to give us uh, in the commandments, um, open our hearts, Lord, and help us to really truly to live gospel of your son to live in Jesus um, this day and all of our days through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Oops, I know it's blowing up. Okay, if you remember last time Jesus was uh, Monday, Tuesday of Holy Week. Um, Jesus was in the temple uh, and and uh, talking to the scribes, uh, the chief priests and the elders of the temple and he told them a parable about uh, the vineyard owner, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's kind of where we left off. Um, today continues that discussion, basically, with um, the chief priest uh, and the elders in the temple. Uh, and he tells another parable, this time of the wedding feast, right? Jesus is, is given a lot of parables to the, the, the scribes and the Pharisees and uh, the elders, um, the chief priest, um, because he wants to draw them into... Um, what he's trying to teach. Uh, he's he's uh, giving them something to think about, I guess, right? And he spends a lot of time talking to these to these men, um, which says something about the fact that he, Jesus doesn't give up any, on anybody, right? True. Jesus did give up on the Pharisees and scribes, even though he had a hard time with them uh, and uh, and uh, had uh, they tried his patience quite a bit. He never gave up, right? Yeah, even he, for kept, them. he kept trying. He kept trying. Um... Jewish literature, this is a, the parable of the wedding feast, Jewish literature um, saw uh, the Messianic age and um, uh, the Messianic era, um, they, they compared it to a feast themselves. Um, Isaiah chapter 25 verse 6 says, A time is coming when the Lord of hosts will prepare a banquet on this mountain of ours. And that would be on Jerusalem, in Jerusalem, right? Uh, on, uh, on the Temple Mount. No meat so tender, no wine so mellow. Meat that drips with fat, wine well strained. So uh, a feast that he's going to prepare, a banquet, and it would be a wedding feast. And kind of, well, they saw it as a feast, I guess. And mm -hmm. they would even saw, in a way, the, the Messiah as a bridegroom uh, having a wedding to Israel. Uh, if you read um, Psalm 45, that's uh, mm -hmm. a, a psalm about the wedding feast of the king, right? So they were expecting this kind of a celebratory atmosphere, this kind of a... Uh, a nuptial kind of a thing going on with the, with the Messiah. All right, so it's not without reason that Jesus gives this parable. Mm -hmm. And it begins, verse 1, And again Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven, remember he's talking to the chief priest, right? The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a marriage feast for his son and sent his servants to call those who were invited to the marriage feast, but they wouldn't come. You imagine he's looking at him when he says this. Again, he sent other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, Behold, I have made ready my dinner. My ox, my, my fat calves are killed. Right? Uh, and what, is, what does Isaiah say? No meat so tender, no wine so mellow, meat that drips with fat. Right? right? Mm -hmm. Tell those who are invited, Behold, I have made ready my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the marriage feast. But they made light of it and went off. One to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his servants, treated them shamefully, and killed them. Mm -hmm. And imagine he's looking at them again. Mm -hmm. The king was angry, and he sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burnt their city. So the king's angry, obviously, for good reason. He sends his, his, his troops to destroy the city. This is a foretelling, probably, of the destruction of Jerusalem, the temple that they were so proud of, right, that they had so much stake in. 
um, was going to be uh, destroyed uh, in 70 AD, as you all know, by um, Titus, who's the son of the emperor Vespasian. Um, okay. Then he said to his servants, the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. They're not worthy. Go, therefore, to the thoroughfares and invite to the marriage feast as many as you find. And those servants went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found. So the servants that went out this last time would be the apostles, right? Uh, because the, uh, the, uh, the Pharisees and the chief priests and the elders and the people of Israel were not worthy for the marriage feast, right? And those servants went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good, both bad and good. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. So they gathered the bad and the good come to the wedding feast, right? Into the church, you might say, right? So both the Jews and the Gentiles. Both the Jews and the Gentiles, but that's not necessarily the bad and the good. The I bad know. and the good is us and our, anyway, the good and the bad, right? Right. But when, they came, when the king came in to look at, at the guest, he saw there a man who had no wedding garment. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and cast him into the outer darkness. There men will weep and gnash their teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Um, the gathered here are the Gentiles and those Jews, as Mary Ann mentioned, who, who would accept Christ. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the servants are the apostles or missionaries. For, um, those who uh, work for um, the kingdom, right? Mm -hmm. um, they gather into the place of the wedding feast, both good and bad, right? That would be here in the church on earth, and of course, this is this has judgment overtones to it for sure, right? Mm -hmm. um, so this is referring to the general judgment and to the and, and for our own ju particular judgments, right? I mean, it's it's open to everyone, right? It, it, not the kingdom just is, you. Everyone is called the righteous. Right? Everyone is called, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Very good point. Um, sinners and just alike are all called. But they're not all found worthy, right? right? And this this is a warning. This is a warning that mm -hmm. Jesus is giving. Um, Romans chapter eleven verse nineteen says, "You will say then the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in." In other words, the Jews were broken off that I might be grafted in as a Gentile, right? Mm -hmm. Paul continues, "Well, because of unbelief they were broken off. But you stand by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear." Right, you stand by faith. They were broken off, and implying you could be broken off as well, right? Yeah. For if God did not spare the natural branches, the Jews, right? Fear lest perhaps also He doesn't spare you, right? So this idea of of, of eternal um, uh, or or um, what do they call it when it's um, Entitlement? When your salvation is assured salvation. Um, security, right? Eternal security, yes, but in heaven, eternal security, right? Yes, we can have security in Christ, but we shouldn't presume that, you know, uh, we should always keep an eye on our, on our wedding garments and what they look like, right? Lest we be cast off. Yes, because the, the wedding garment is the fruit of your faith. And if your fruit is not showing... Yeah, the wedding garment is, is the purity of your soul, right? Like, that's why we give the kids a baptismal garment that's white, right? In fact, the baptismal liturgy says, bring it unstained into unto your judgment, basically, right? Specifically, in Revelations 19, 7 through 8, the deeds, which is the garment that accompanies your faith, yeah. the deeds are outlined as almsgiving, prayer, fasting, and works of mercy. Okay. Which... I would like to point out again that almsgiving is not the same as tithing. Tithing 10% for the upkeep of the church was expected for the Jews, period. That was how the Levites were paid. That's how the priesthood, the priestly class was paid. Remember, they had no land. They totally relied on tithing. Almsgiving was that those charitable deeds that were done above and beyond tithing. Very good, thank you. So wedding garment. Uh, this guy had accepted the invitation to the wedding. He'd gone to the wedding, but he hadn't put on a wedding garment, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and he, and uh, it's a, this is an, an allegorical element, right? Um, it represents fitness for the kingdom, right? It represents the sanctifying grace, we could say that, right? Mm -hmm. 
um, these words of Christ, they therefore kind of speak against this doctrine of once saved and always saved. <laughs> Your mom just wrote that once saved, always saved is refuted here. Yeah. Um, exactly. So he tends to feast. He, he's, he's, he doesn't refuse the invitation, but he's found unworthy. So the garment is charity, holiness of life, sanctifying grace, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the saints say a pure and holy life is like a clean and splendid robe woven of virtues and good works, mm -hmm. which are a glorious adornment of a man, right? Mm -hmm. St. Jerome and Hilary and Tertullian and all those would uh, said that. St. Gregory says, it is marvelous how he calls him friend mm -hmm. and yet rejects him. It is though he oh, said plainly, yeah. friend and not friend, friend by faith, but not friend by works, mm -hmm. right? Friend by faith, but not friend by works. Um, you came to the wedding garment, uh, wedding feast, but you did not, you did not do my will. You didn't put, you didn't uh, put on the wedding oh, garment, right? Lukewarmness. Okay, bind him. This is a, a, a signifies uh, that the the damned cannot resist the sentence of God, right? The man is silent. He knows he's done wrong. He knows he's not wearing a wedding garment. There's nothing he can say. There's no excuse at that point. It's perfectly clear to everybody. He doesn't have a wedding garment on, including himself, right? Mm. Right? And so they're, the, the damned can't resist a sentence of God. They're bound. Um, and, and, and then there's nothing more they can, no, no more good that they can do repentance upon the, the moment of death, right? Oh. Um, it's like they had their, their hands and their feet and their mouth and everything. Their souls were all bound, right? Um, and uh, by the judgment of God. Um, we definitely need to be praying for God's mercy. Saint Gregory says, "Those who are who now are willingly in bonds to sin shall then, against their will, be bound in punishment." Mm. Okay. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, but it's just a warning there. Then the Pharisees went, and remember, he's 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 addressing this to the to the chief priests and the elders, right? But also to us. Then the Pharisees went and took counsel how to entangle him in his talk. They didn't mm. like what he said. Mm -mm. And they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians. Now, this is so they're, they're now teaming up with the people they can't stand. They don't like the Herodians at all. Because the Herodians were in cahoots with the Romans. Yes, the Herodians were in Herodians. And it, it's, it's interesting, the Pharisees as well were, had this, this idea of, of we'll bide our time with the Romans, we'll get along with the Romans, we won't rock the boat mm -hmm. with the Romans, you know, we'll try... We'll try to keep it separate from them, but we're also not going to, we're, we're going to, in a way, cooperate with the Romans, right? right? And so there's 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 a little bit of a commonality with them, right? Mm -hmm. um, one is doing it for, for reasons of, of religion, wanting to, to preserve the temple, preserve um, the, the Jewish practices and customs and feasts, right? And the other, the Herodians are doing it for profit, right? They're a political party. In a way, the... the they're doing it to pervert, preserve themselves, well, not yes. to preserve their religion. I, I tend to give them the benefit of the doubt. Oh, you're nicer you know, than I am. That, yeah, <laughs> that, yeah, they're all bound up with all this. Their identity is bound up with that, um, what they're doing. Um, and that's where they go off. Power wants to hold on to power. And that's yeah, and their power, right? And that's where they kind of go off the rails. Mm -hmm. But but I, you know, I'm, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. I think Paul was trying to keep the law out of the out of honestly trying to please God. And he was a Pharisee. Yeah, that's true. And all right, all, all Pharisees right. Are the same. But anyway, oh, um, yeah. but it's these Pharisees probably scene. are the ones who are in cahoots with the Herodians. They're not wanting to rock the boat, right? And they can mm -hmm. see that Jesus is a boat rocker, right? Okay. <laughs> and, and they sent their disciples rock to him along boat. with the Herodians oh. saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully mm -hmm. and care for no man for you do not regard the position of men. Tell us then... What do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? We just had this gospel a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but Jesus, aware of their malice, aware of their malice, said, Why put me to the test, you hypocrites? Why are they hypocrites? Because they're saying, Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Well, they're all for paying taxes to Caesar. Yeah, why do they have this coin? That yeah, the, 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 hmm. uh, the Pharisees hmm. are about getting along with the Romans, right? So they know darn good and well, right? Anyway... So Jesus says, so that's why he calls them hypocrites. Show me the money for the tax, he says. And they brought him a coin. And Jesus said, whose likeness and inscription is this? They said, Caesar's. Then he said to them, render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard it, they marveled, and they left him and went away. Apparently they'd never thought about that. The, this, 
that there is actually, okay, you guys are cooperating with the Romans. Well, then, yeah, they have power over you. Give to the Romans what's the Romans, or yeah, belongs to the Romans, but to God what belongs to God, right? And, uh, you know, the only reason they're having to be subservient to the Romans is because they weren't faithful to God in the first place. Yeah, they well, they yeah. gave their little pinch of incense. The they have the image of Caesar in their hands. They have been yeah, they're they're not being faithful. Yeah. Sorry. Anyway, the Herodians. Um, I'll just give a little background on them. They're a heretical Jewish sect. They were political, not religious, as we mentioned, right? And they favored uh, Caesar, right, as Marianne mentioned, uh, and the payment of the tribute to him, right. They want to get along with the Romans because the Romans make them rich, right, and give them power. Um, they're named after uh, the, uh, Herod of Ascalon. He's the father of Herod Antipas, right? Uh, and he fancied himself, actually this Herod fancied himself a Christ in a way, right? A Messiah figure. He's uh, the one that sought to have Jesus as a baby killed, correct? Uh, I think Ascalon I think. Is, is Herod the Great. I'm not... Okay. Uh, yeah. That Herod may be wrong. Great. Herod the, yeah, it is Herod the Great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, absolutely right. So he fancied himself to be the Savior, the Christ, the King, mm -hmm. right? The one who's a legitimate heir to David's throne, right? Uh, and this is why he had the infants killed at Bethlehem, like Marian said, right? Uh, and he had he had he had begun to lavishly rebuild the temple, right? And to make it a, a wonder of the world, really, and all to to make himself great, right? And mm -hmm. and to curry favor with the children of Israel. Okay, so that's the Herodians. He was playing both sides of the coin, right? <laughs> the same day the Sadducees came to him who say that there is no resurrection and they asked him so the same day this was Monday uh, same day uh, the Sadducees came to him who say that there is no resurrection and they asked him a question saying teacher Moses said if a man dies having no children his brother must marry the widow and raise up children for his brother true right it's important that a man has heirs right and if he doesn't leave heirs then his brothers are supposed to do it for him right now there were seven brothers among us. Uh, 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 there were seven brothers among us. The first died and married and died, and having no children, left his wife to his brother. So too the second and third, down to the seventh. After them the woman died. In the resurrection, therefore, to which of the seven will she be wife? For they all had her as wife, right? Um, but Jesus answered them, "You are wrong, because you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God." Right? Ouch. Ooh. For in the resurrection, they will neither marry nor be given in marriage. Marriage is for uh, the life on earth. Right? Procreation. Because, right. And, it, and, it, and spouses getting building each other up in holiness and getting each other to heaven. Right. And all that is over and done with yeah. once uh, death comes, right? Mm -hmm. Once no uh, need to populate. you pass into eternity, right? Mm -hmm. So there's no more need for marriage. Right? Um, that was, the, like Marianne said, there's a purpose for marriage, and that was for procreation and for the good of the spouses. Well, you got everything good you need in heaven. You don't need your spouse anymore for that. Your, the spouse will be there. Well, your mm -hmm. former spouse will, poor spouse will be there. You'll enjoy their company and everything else. But you, there won't be a marriage as such as you had on earth, right? Um, um, in fact, it'll be even a, a more loving relationship mm -hmm. in heaven, honestly. Um, so Jesus tells us for the resurrection after for in the resurrection so the re rise, rising from the dead which which oh, these Sadducees didn't believe sorry, in. Sorry, you ahead. you skipped something that I want us to make sure. Okay. Uh, for the resurrection, neither will they marry or be given into marriage, but are like angels in heaven. That doesn't mean they become angels. No, that means they are like angels. Yeah, and, and when when he when he's saying like angels, there he's he's mean there are spiritual. there's spiritual beings. It'll be you have a spiritualized body. You still have your body, right? But you're going to have no need to eat and to drink. Mm -hmm. You can if you want. You'll have no need to procreate, right? Because there's no need for the, the will, there will be no childbirth uh, in heaven. Um, anyway, that's for the that's for the here for the here and now. So that's how they're like Sorry, angels. They just, aren't angels, yeah. right? Angels are far superior to us, as you all know, mm -hmm. right? Even the lowliest angel is angel is is is. Uh, just tremendously greater than the than the, the greatest human there ever was besides Christ. Although he was a divine person, not a human person, uh, the, the exception to that exception to that would be the, the Blessed Virgin Mary, right? Mm -hmm. Who, because of her, of her complete holiness and her and her unity with God and the position that God has raised her up to, right? She is above even the angels, right? In in glory and in grandeur. Um, 
For And as for the resurrection of the dead, you fools, have you not read what it was said to you by God? I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And when the crowds heard it, they were astonished at his teaching. Now, the, the Sadducees um, were a religious and political kind of a Jewish interest group uh, around the second century. Their name is derived from a high priest from a high priest named Zadok, who served under King Solomon, right? Um, and his descendants were granted exclusive rights to minister in Jerusalem, right? Um, although by this time, the, the, the high priesthood was being bought and sold uh, kind of like a political uh, appointeeship, kind of like honestly. China. Right. Uh, and it became very corrupt. Uh, as part of the Jewish, they were part of the Jewish society's upper class, right? So these are the, these are, uh, the high and mighty, right? Um, and and it's, it's likely that high many of them mighty? were wealthy and held important yeah. positions uh, in Jerusalem, right? Um, they, most notably, the Sadducees were, were, were closely associated with the temple and the priesthood. Like I just said, the, while not all Sadducee, Sadducees were Levitical priests, Many priests align themselves with the Sadducees uh, and their agenda for Jewish life, right? The Sadducees thus held many official leadership positions uh, in Old Covenant Judaism and were in charge of maintaining kind of nat national relations between Israel and Rome, right? Between Israel and Rome, right? So they, had a, they, they were the powerful, the elite, right? Mm -hmm. Who hobnobbed with the Romans. Not the same as the Herodians, right? Um, who had the political power, who had the, 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 the legislative power, we might say, uh, under the Romans. Well, and the Herodians were not, they, they didn't follow Jewish law. The right. Sadducees followed Jewish law. Right, and, and unlike the Sadducees, the, 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 the Pharisees, the Sadducees sought to, to, to kind of maintain the this, this, this status quo. Well, the Pharisees did as well, honestly. Um, their outlook on Jewish life was, was 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 probably one of tolerance. They were like the more like the Herodians who just wanted it, it was about them maintaining power, right? Um, they what? Mike made that joke in a homily once. Since they do not believe in right. resurrection, that is why they are sad. They're sad, you see? sad you see. Yeah. So they, they expressly, <laughs> expressly, explicitly denied resurrection of the body, the existence of angels or spirits, right? Uh, which Jesus just gave a little poke at him about that, right? Because the, they'll be like angels, he says, in heaven. And these guys are saying there are no such things as angels. They wouldn't have believed probably in uh, the immortal soul, the immort immortality of the soul. That is sad. Yeah, I so mean, truly. They're, they're very much uh, materialist, let's say that, right? Um, mm -hmm. And they and They, they believe that all there was was what is here on earth. Yeah, and they, did, they deny the full authority of the scriptures. They only recognize really the Pentateuch, right? Yeah. Which is what Jesus addresses them with because he's reading from Exodus. What does God mm -hmm. say to Moses at the burning bush? I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. All right, so he throws, <laughs> that's the one they'll, they'll accept. They'll accept that. Uh, so he's not the God of the dead, but of the living. Therefore, God's not dead. Jesus he's has just addressed. Alive. Jesus has just Sorry. addressed that there are, there are angels, uh, and that there's a resurrection, mm -hmm. right, and that there's an immortality of the soul. And right? he did it all within the scriptures that they acknowledge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they were astonished as a teaching. Apparently, they hadn't thought about these things before, but now they are. Anyway, so now Jesus has basically addressed everybody in power in Jerusalem. Right, the high priest describes the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Herodians. Right, they, he's he's addressed them all. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Verse thirty-four. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, Ooh. now they came, came together, and they one of back. them, a Lord. So they're coming to Jesus, right? Uh, and because he's he's in Jerusalem, he's he's entered into Jerusalem with his great throng, Hosanna in the highest, uh, riding on a colt, uh, up into the temple overthrowing the money changers he's healing people he's teaching blah 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 uh and so they're all coming at at jesus right that this this upstart who's coming to one our domain basically another. right uh and okay ask so one of them a lawyer or a scribe ask him a question to test him teacher which is the greatest commandment in the law this guy's a scribe he's a lawyer he's a scribe. he knows the law upwards and downwards lawyer. backwards and forth right so he asked Jesus, which is the greatest commandment in the law? The greatest commandment, right? And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. 
This is the greatest commandment. And the second is like it. He said this is the fir- the great and first commandment. It depends on which. This is the great is and like first it. commandment, right? And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments, all of the law, uh, depend all of the law and the prophets. Because they had 613. There were 613 uh, laws, or commandments of the law. Laws. And they were divided into to, um, light and grave, or uh, less severe and more severe, less important, more important, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and this is why they asking, he's asking this, the, the Pharisee is asking about the greatest, the most weightiest, what is the grandest, which is the one. So which one is it? Deuteronomy 6.5 six, five. Yeah. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Right. Some of the commandments could be expiated by by uh, just you know simple cereal offers or grain offers. Some had to have uh, the death of a, of a victim, right? Blood offering uh, uh, in order to be expiated. So there were, there were degrees of sin. We can say that, right? Mm-hmm. More Some more weighty than others. Um, now Jesus is saying uh, the these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Um, this last phrase kind of repeats what he said in chapter 5, verse 17. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law. I have not come ab- to abolish the law, but to fulfill it, right? Or, to abolish the law and the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but to fulfill, right? Right. These Perfection. two things fulfill all of God's law. Right. So, loving so now God, we, yeah. loving your neighbor. So now we understand what this fulfilling is. The divine system was that Jesus had come not to destroy, but to bring to perfection. It was essentially the law of charity, the law of love. Because you can't love God and not love your neighbor, right? And if you right. love God, you will love your neighbor. The two are, are, are parent and child. Mm-hmm. One flows from the other. Right. And one flows out of the other, into the other, and then back into the other. Does that make sense? Okay. So someone says, I think uh, Paul or John says, Paul. he who says he does not, he, he knows God but does not love is a liar, right? And there's no truth in him, right? Because oh. also according to Paul, love is the greatest theological virtue. Mm-hmm. Well, we know that beautiful passage. Mm-hmm. Um, is that, oh, this is 1 Corinthians, Corinthians. Uh, 13, 13. Yeah. Yep. The um, greatest of these is love. The greatest of these is love, right? Uh, verse 41 and now while the Pharisees now while the Pharisees were gathered together Jesus asked them a question so the Pharisees are still standing around mm-hmm. kind of astonished saying what do you think of the Christ whose son is he this is kind of a Jesus directly trying to penetrate into their hearts right mm-hmm. trying to really get them to realize what's in front of them and they said to him the son of David he said to them how is it then that David, inspired by the Spirit, calls him, the Messiah, Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, this is from Psalm 110, 110 or... It's 110. 110. 110. Okay. One. The Lord said to my Lord, the Lord said to my Lord, so the Lord said to David, right, sit at my right till I put thy enemies under thy feet. If David thus calls him Lord... How is he his son? And no one was able to answer him a word. Nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. Right? Now it becomes, let's put Jesus to death. We can't best him. He he bests us every time. We're frustrated. This is getting out of hand. He's got to die. He's got to die. And that's that's the... the um, where the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Herodians and the chief priests, that's where they're all going to come from, right? Um, this is kind of a, a prelude. This is where the, this is where, the rub, where it's really where the rubber it's meets coming the to road. A head. Is that where you were about to it's say? It's coming to a head here in Jerusalem. Okay. The Lord said to my Lord. So Jesus is definitely putting a spiritual bent on Messiahship here, right? Mm-hmm. He's not just the son of David. He's greater than David, right? He's equating him with God, even, right? The Lord said to my Lord. This, in Jewish society, especially back in the David's uh, era, the son would never be greater than the father. Right. Never, right? Even the grandson would never be greater than the grandfather. The great, 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 great grandson would never be greater than 
you know his 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 predecessors, right? It's impossible. It's a it's a, it's an affront, right? So what Jesus is saying here is da the Messiah is more than just a descendant of David and one who will sit on the Davidic throne. That's true. He will and he is. But he's more than that. He is the Lord. He is the Lord. Right? He's the son of David and the son of God. Right. And I think the, the, the Jews had some idea of this before Jesus, but after Jesus, uh, because of the preaching of the, the apostles and whatnot, this kind of started getting downplayed in the commentaries I read. They start downplaying the psalm referring to oh, the, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees right. da start downplaying the psalm. Right. right. Gotcha. Okay. Um, oh. That's all I've got. I think that's the end of the chapter. Really, It was really fast tonight. Sorry, but I didn't have much for you. Um, we'll try to do two chapters next week, 23 and 24, if I can. Um, you've all heard these these readings. Um, well, we're doing Matthew, so the year of Matthew. Um, so we're, a lot of this coincides with homilies and your own Bible studies you've done recently. So I know it's probably some of it's redundant. But um, anyway, it's interesting to delve, to delve into it and, to, and to, to put yourself in those scenes and think about how Jesus is saying these things mm -hmm. and, and looking at the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the, and, and, uh, the Herodians, you know. And you see, in, you can see in this that Jesus really is trying to reach out. He's engaging them. He's willingly engaging them, right? Mm -hmm. He doesn't walk away. He doesn't dismiss them, right? He's engaging them, um, and he's 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 uh, he's trying to reach them. But he's giving them an opportunity to to convert their hearts, right? An opportunity to convert their hearts, right? And that's what it's going to take. It's going to take their hearts, right? Um, mm -hmm. Without a conversion of heart, without faith, no matter what miracle Jesus does, um, none of that. Um, they were to see this, some, some great signs, some miracle, which a lot of them had seen great signs of Jesus. They performed miracles in the temple. Mm -hmm. He performed miracles uh, in front of them on many Sabbaths, right? Without that faith in your heart, um, it, it doesn't mean, it doesn't, it, it's short lived. Let's say that. It's easily forgotten. It's easily explained away. Mm -hmm. It's easily rationalized. Mm -hmm. You know, there just have to be some other explanation, mm -hmm. you know. And there's no way, you know. So, even to to the people who saw Jesus doing his miracles, and even to the 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 the, the apostles and disciples after the resurrection, Jesus remains an object of faith, an object of faith. It's mm -hmm. we human beings are fickle. We are <laughs> fickle. Yeah. Um, well, you know, if it doesn't suit us the way we want it to suit us, we'll easily find an excuse not to believe or not to engage. And there's those little whispers that happen that make us doubt things, right. that make so us despair, that make us... Jesus is trying to shake yeah. up the scribes and the Pharisees, right? Mm -hmm. uh, to get them, to try to bring them to some sort of beginning of faith. Because if he's really the Messiah, um, you know, the Romans are going to come and destroy you all. They're going to destroy the temple. And so they create, so then fear is created and... And, oh, everything's going to collapse if we don't have this exactly this way. Well, they wanted a Messiah, but they, they, wanted, they wanted their Messiah to be someone who comes to destroy the Romans. And right. that's not who Jesus was presenting. Right. right? Uh, and so they, could have, they wanted none of that because all he's going to do is, is stir up trouble. Uh, and, and we're going to have a rebellion and it's, you know, mm -hmm. we're gonna, the, the Romans will come. The, the irony being that the Rome, that it was actually false, false messiahs who rose up after G, after the resurrection, and even before the resurrection, there were false messiahs. But mm -hmm. these false messiahs, because remember, they're all expecting the Messiah right around the time Jesus is born. Mm -hmm. Jesus shows up on the scene. It was that prediction was made in Daniel, right? Mm -hmm. Of almost you know exactly when the Messiah was supposed to appear and they all know it's right around this time this in this 20 30 year time period the Messiah is supposed to appear so everyone's on the lookout so these false messiahs rise up and they eventually do they get the kind of someone who gets the kind of the Messiah they want somebody who's a warlord right and what happens the Romans crush them exactly the Romans crush them and right? your your mom is saying what I was what I was getting at it's the whisper of the evil one when we have those moments of uh, despair and anxiety and oh you know we need to let yeah, go and let God because the spirit of God is not a spirit of fear 
um, even in the midst of trials, there's a spirit of yeah, and no one's immune peace. to it. Yeah. Oh, no all of us are. You get you get frustrated. You get disappointed. Uh, you have a bad day. Um, it's like yeah, you know, it's just it's mm -hmm. easy. You don't feel good. It's easy to you're not despairing. It's just easy to re, to rebel to want to take control yourself. You know, it, it, in a way, and, and you know, I'll just raise myself up. You know, and and there's there are ways, and those ways are often sinful ways. You know, that we're gonna we're gonna be our own little god. Uh, and uh, anytime you're your own little god, it's you're not gonna be obeying the true god. Uh, anyway, but so we're all we're all everybody doesn't matter. Everybody's susceptible to this. Great mm -hmm. saints, maybe not. Saint Saint no. Saint Teresa of Avila said, you know, once you have the 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 uh, what was it, spiritual union, um, the nuptial union. With the Lord, it's almost impossible to commit a mortal sin. But it took her a long time to get to that point. Yeah. So the, the holier we are, the more uh, this discuss, the more what did Father say this weekend? The more reprehensible sin is, and more distasteful sin is, right? Um, but everyone is. You can go from that to being your own little God real quick. Mm -hmm. All it takes is a bad day. All it takes is a bad day. That's how mm -hmm. weak we are. I say that. Yeah. That's how weak I am. I shouldn't comment on you all. You're all probably way holier than I am. But it's just, all it takes is a bad day, mm -hmm. and boom, you're 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 falling. Anyway, God bless you all. Um, hope you enjoyed the Bible study. When you read the scriptures, put yourself you know put yourself in those scenes. That's part of lexio divina, right? You imagine yourself in part of meditation. You imagine yourself in that scene. You know, uh, mm -hmm. all the imagine details. Where people are standing, where you're standing, you know, mm -hmm. what Jesus is, is how he's saying things, what he's looking at, you know. Commentaries are, are useful, but you got to read the commentaries in, a, in the spirit of contemplation as well. You read mm -hmm. those commentaries with the scriptures. Anyway. Before, you, before you read, ask the Holy Spirit to open your mind and your heart to speak to you through his word. I guess we should pray. Yes, we should. All right. <laughs> well, for... A peaceful outcome to this election, God help us. Uh, Mary, um, Virgin Mother of the Americas and, and uh, Patroness uh, of the Americas, um, pray for us. Hail Mary, full, full of grace, grace, the Lord, Lord is with thee. Blessed, blessed art thou among women, women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, God pray, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. death. Amen. Amen. In the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God bless you all. We'll see you next week for chapter 23 and hopefully 24 as well. God bless you. Have a great evening. Oh, this one.